I feel like the amount of text on legendary creatures is just increasing by the day. The professor at Tolarian Community College did a great comedy skit on this, so I highly recommend you check that out. And that's just the complication of text and word boxes and magic cards in general. But when it comes to legendary creatures, this complication just comes with not only more abilities to forward your commander deck's game plan, but also protection. It's harder to remove legendary creatures. That's simple to say, but they also have a lot of abilities that you just can't deal with if you leave them out. If you kill them, if you exile them, they just come back. A lot of commander players build their decks better. And so you have to kill a commander multiple times just to be able to permanently deal with it. And when you have three other players in the pod, you can't just hyper focus on one player. You use all your resources and everyone else is just left to do whatever they want to do. So I'm here in this video to give you three different categories of removal spells that you need to play today to improve your commander decks and deal with commanders in a way that your opponent's not able to answer. Let's say, for example, you have something like a Kenrith Return King, a card that has so many activated abilities that when it hits the battlefield, it's a kill on sight type of card. What if you were to just turn it into a zero one insect? What if you were able to shuffle it away into your opponent's deck so they can't tutor it or get it back? Assuming they don't play the tutors, of course. I mean, the tuck rule is not in Commander anymore. It hasn't been for over a decade at this point, or almost a decade. And really, the type of removal that I want to talk about today is very important to add to your arsenal because, again, they are ways that a lot of Commander players aren't conventionally ready to deal with. They're not ready for their Commander to just lose all abilities or turned, uh, get turned upside down, but they are ready for it to get removed or exiled because they have some Graveyard Recursion, or they have some ramp to play it back out. So with the first category, I want to talk about enchantments that turn your commanders into nothing. I'm talking about Dark Steel Mutation as the first card, a white and a one enchantment aura that says enchanted creature is an insect artifact creature with base power and toughness zero one and has indestructible and loses all other abilities, card types, and creature types. I mean, a pretty solid enchantment for something like a Kenrith, but also has really good viability against cards like Krenko. You have to think about certain colors that don't have a good variety of options for enchantment removal, namely red. And something like this is gonna be able to permanently turn something off to the point where your opponent is gonna to have to start looking at politics towards another player to get them to remove this. And that's resources that that player is now not not able to use on you you were able to turn off your opponent's commander it's a win-win you're getting a lot of value out of these cards dark seal mutation a very famous one has been all around for a while similar to something like song of the dryads green and two for an enchant or an enchant permanent it's a lot better dark seal was enchant creature song of the dryads allows you to enchant artifacts enchantments heck it allows you to enchant your own lands enchanted permanent is a colorless forest land so it's going to lose all other abilities and subtypes so you can use it yourself to maybe turn one of your colorless lands into a colored source to maybe help you in future turns or currently but this is going to be great against your opponent's commanders to be able to permanently turn those off against losing all abilities all types against the typal decks it's going to be a great way to shut that off but also again the activated abilities the triggered abilities they're not going to get those as well it's just more and more turning off your opponent's commanders are really key but having something like an enchantment at your whim that has versatility to be able to use on your end is also key. But then really the card that, you know, kind of inspired this category is something like Imprisoned in the Moon. Blue and two for an enchant aura that says enchant creature, land, or planeswalker. Enchanted permanent is a colorless land that says, you know, tap and add a colorless and loses all other card types and abilities. A great part about this is not only is this in blue, a color that generally isn't great at dealing with permanents. So you're thinking of cards like Pongify that can destroy, but again, we're not looking to destroy commanders. We're looking to deal with them in a way that your opponents can't answer anymore. So this one is great because it enchants a land. So if your opponent has a problematic land, something like a glacial chasm, you're gonna be able to get rid of that. A problematic commander, you're gonna be able to get rid of that in a creature type, but also it hits planeswalkers. There are commanders out there that are planeswalkers. So being able to hit that is also fantastic. So if you have a Cavern of Souls player on the other side of the field and they resolve this against you as a blues player with a bunch of counter magic, having something like a Prison of the Moon has great versatility. Again, similar to Song of the Dryads, you can use it on your own stuff. So if there is a world where you have a card that's not that useful anymore, you have something that's just turned off, turn it into a colorless land, help it ramp out. Otherwise it is a removal spell. So it's not here to help you, but it has the versatility and versatility and options are key because if, again, the text of all commander cards are gonna go up, you might as well use it yourself. But let's go into category number two, flipping your opponent's cards upside down so they can't get them and you have trap cards. 
the titling I'm working on. But when it comes to cards like Cyber Conversion, blue and blue for an instant, turn target creature face down. It's a 2-2 Cyberman artifact creature. So shout out to the Doctor Who set for really helping us out with this one. An instant in blue that permanently removes a creature that doesn't destroy or exile. This turns it face down. Notably, there are a lot of permanents out there, a lot of cards out there that turn a card face down and allow you to turn it back up for a cost. This just turns it face down. And that's the beauty of it. If that card doesn't have more for some way to turn it back up, that card is now permanently face down. Now you have to get your opponent to attack into another player and you can look at the other players and be like, look, don't block, let that thing hit you. Notably though, it is a face down creature. If you hit the permanent that is their commander, that's gonna still do commander damage to you. So it's a two, two, it's gonna deal two commander damage. Remember that it still does commander damage. It may not just be, you know, if it's like a nine, seven, it's not dealing nine damage to you, but it's dealing two. And then it doesn't have those abilities. It's face down. It's just a 2-2 Cyberman, which is great. There are some synergies in the fact that it's an artifact and everything, whatever. That's fine in and of itself. But again, being able to permanently remove activated abilities, any triggered abilities, anything, and not have it return from the command zone, a beautiful solution. And at instant speed, might I remind you. Blue Blue is a bit of a taxing cost, but come on. To be able to permanently do, uh, remove with, uh, something like that, very cheap cost to pay. And really where this card is inspired from, in my mind, is Ixodron, a classic commander card. Again, available for decades, not even over a decade, decades from Time Spiral. Blue, blue, and three for a creature illusion that uh, says, as Ixodron enters the battlefield, turn all other non-token creatures face down. They're two, two creatures. Ixodron's power and toughness are equal to the number of face down creatures on the battlefield. It's star, star. So not only... Is this a great flicker target? So if you have access to this card and your opponent plays creatures after that, you can just flicker this and keep doing that over and over and over again. But all other non-token creatures face down. It doesn't turn them like face back up or anything, right? Like face down is a state. So the face down cards don't turn face up. Face down is just a permanent state. If the card's face down, it will stay face down, right? With the backup. They are all 2-2 two -two creatures. So again, that whole scenario with the cyber conversion applies. If you turn a commander face down, if you're dealt damage by that commander, even in its face down state, it's still going to deal commander damage to you. But this is like a wipe. It's kind of like all other creatures, right? So this is going to be your creatures as well. So if you have synergies like token synergies, those tokens are going to be fa turned face down all other non-token creatures, but your opponents may not be ready for that. They are probably not playing as many tokens. All their creatures are going to go down. You're going to have an Ixodron that's going to be extremely large. Your tokens are still going to be face up. And this card is just going to go absolutely insane. Of course, it's removal. It can be removed. But the key is if Ixodron gets removed, it's not like the cards turn back up. That's the key. They are permanently down. Ixodron just coming down, hitting the field is fantastic to be able to remove everything that is currently there. And what's great about it is it produces a lot less salt than other board wipes because, yeah, I didn't remove everything. Nothing's in the yard. So against the graveyard synergies, nothing hits the yard. And then against everyone else that gets mad at board wipes, you still got your creatures. Swing with them. You got a bunch of creatures. Go ahead. They're now two twos. And that's the beauty of Ixodron. It is repeatable. It doesn't, it does nothing to you. It has no downside if it gets removed. And you can take advantage of it knowing that you have an Ixodron, you play out more tokens. Those don't get turned face down, but your opponents aren't ready for that. They're not playing around the fact that you have an Ixodron unless you're tutoring for it every game. But therein lies that category. The last category of card that I want to go over is shuffling your opponent's cards away because the tuck rule doesn't exist. We're going to start off with red. Red is definitely one of the classic examples of this, but we're not going to go into the classic card just yet. I know that there's one instant that y'all are thinking of, not yet. The one I want to bring up specifically is a niche option in Zoyoa's Justice. My apologies if I pronounced that wrong here. Red and one for an instant that says the owner of target artifact or creature with mana value one or greater shuffles it into their library. Then that player discovers X where X is its mana value. So if you shuffle away a permanent or sorry, a creature or an artifact that has converted mana cost two, then they're going to discover two. Right, so they're going to shuffle it back in and, and flip cards until they find a, a permanent with that. And then they can choose to cast it or put it into their hand. The great part about something like this is I wanted to specifically bring this up because I do have a player in my pod that likes to play Hydras. And so the commanders you might think of are something like Gargos Vicious Watcher or something like Zexara the Exemplary. And so these are both decks that want X cost commanders. And what's great about them is they spend a lot of mana to be able to play a giant X creature or create a giant X creature. But then you play something like Zoyoas and shuffle that away, that X creature might only on the field have a converted mana cost of one because it might be like green and X, or it might only have a CMC of two because it's green, green and 
X. And so that's the beauty of it. They will then shuffle to get these other Hydras, these other X spells that will then enter the battlefield with no counters on them. A lot of them will just permanently die. So what's great is that it may actually just be better because you could take a weaker X spell and then shuffle it back into their deck. They discover it. They can't put it onto the field because it'll enter with probably zero counters on it and immediately die. And that's the beauty of it. They'll have to put it into their hand. Yeah, you technically drew them a card. But again, it removes a commander. It removes a permanent without having to put anything into the yard. There's no death triggers, nothing going in the command zone for them to recast beauty through and through. And so that's why I like it as a niche option. The card that this is obviously going to remind everyone of in terms of shuffle effects, Chaos Warp is the go-to shuffle effect in red. One of the few options that red would have against our first category, these enchantments that kind of stop uh, their commanders and everything. Chaos Warp is a great option, especially because it shuffles out a permanent. The owner of target permanent shuffles it into the library, then reveals the top cards of the library. If it's a permanent card, they put it on the battlefield. I'm sure many of you have had that great story of chaos warping a permanent and then your opponent just flips over the exact thing that you shuffled away it's happened to me once it happens to everyone it's a commander rite of passage but another option is something like oblation and the reason i like oblation outside of the fact that i have a group hug deck so shuffling something away and giving my opponent some cards i don't mind but you can use this on yourself so in that example of using it on yourself you can get rid of something like a permanent you're not using anymore a mana rock that doesn't have that value a prison piece that isn't able to stop your opponent anymore you can shuffle it away and draw two cards versatility is key but again, shuffling a permanent, a non-land permanent, you're not going to be able to get rid of your opponent's wastelands, glacial chasms, or their field of the deads, or anything like that. You're not going to be able to get rid of those. But you can get rid of the commander, again, in a world where the tuck rule doesn't exist, shuffle it in, they draw two cards, and... Honestly, it's a great political tool as well, because yes, you can shuffle away your opponent's stuff, but also in a way where if you need someone to draw into an answer, you can shuffle away their most problematic thing and say, hey, look, you know what? That card isn't that great for me. I don't want that here, but I can give you two cards to be able to deal with the thing we're really worried about on opponent number two. And so that's going to be a great political option. So not really ideal to give the problematic player two cards, but the fact that you can use it on yourself, the fact that it has versatility, the fact that you can politic with it, fantastic oblation another shuffle effect that removes a commander without having to destroy or exile it the last card i want to talk about in this category uh, another instant speed option in unexpectedly absent white white and x put target non-land permanent into its owner's library just beneath the top x of that library so if you were to pay one into this then you would put you know kind of second from the top you put one card on top and then just underneath that top one and i really like this because single target you don't need to hit multiple things it's instant speed which is the key and it's not a shuffle so a lot of times if you've maybe manipulated the top of your opponent's library maybe you're playing something like blue you're up taking a jace the mind sculptor and stuff like that if you're manipulating the top of your opponent's library you can keep it that way because a lot of times opponents will have these like terrible draws you've been like putting a bunch of things to the bottom and you don't really want to shuffle and you know that their draws are going to be bad so unexpected absence allows you to like kind of manipulate that a little bit better and so it keeps that order but then allows you to kind of intermingle or force them to draw at, at any which point so that's what i like about unexpected absent it tips it in there no shuffle if you're manipulating it it's a great option to be able to put there again a great option to destroy for the fifth time i feel like i've said this 10 times to deal with the commander or any permanent without having to destroy or exile it so it doesn't hit the command zone it doesn't hit the graveyard there are no triggers nothing like that you just get maybe the target triggers and that way when you pay that word cost you sacrifice your permanent you pay more mana into it you feel like you actually solved something you feel like you actually did something and no more of those comeback mechanics coming to bite you in the butt but let me know what you think about this list are there any cards that i'm missing is there maybe another category that i should go into entirely let me know what you think in the comment section down below and are you playing any one of these cards in your deck already am i introducing you to a new hot tech that you need to put in your deck i'd love to hear it all down below because look at the end of the day when it comes to good removal and hot tech we need a little bit of spice in our life when it comes to playing commander